In this week's video, we'll answer the question, are we dealing with a counter trend rally? Or is this starting to look like a new bullish trend? To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. The CCM market model helps us monitor the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. The probability of good things happening is never zero and the probability of bad things happening is never zero. One of the things that we use to help us with probabilities in the implementation rules is Fibonacci retracements. Let's go over the basic concept quickly and then apply the basic concept to two charts from 2016. What FIBs help us with is the following. If the primary trend is down, it is common for a counter trend move to retrace 38.2%, 50%, and the 50%, you're retracing 50% of the primary move from A to B. It is normal and to be expected to retrace as much as 50% or as much as 61.8% of the A to B move. These are the three major fibs. Typically, that's where most counter trend rallies fall. Not all of them, and there are other fibs that we can use as well. And it's not unusual, I wouldn't say that it's common, to retrace 100% of a move. Since it is normal, to retrace 38.2, 50%, or 61.8% of a down move within the primary trend, it also tells us that after those normal retracements, which are considered to be counter trend moves, this is the primary trend, this is a counter trend move, after the counter trend move, the primary trend resumes, and by definition, that would go on to make a lower low. Primary trend, counter trend move, retraces 61.8% of the A to B move, and then typically the primary trend, which in this case is down, would resume. Now let's take that generic concept and apply it to charts as of February 19th, 2016. You can calculate a FIB off of any high, so this A high here, or any low. This B represents a low. Here's a high here, A to B. So if we calculate those FIBs based on the way retracements work, it tells us that if we fall and the primary trend is down from A to B, it is normal to retrace 38.2%, 50%, 61.8% and in some cases 100% of the A to B move. We can make the same calculations and same assumptions from a probability perspective on this A to B move. Retrace 38.2, 50 or 61.8. This is RSP a week ago on Friday, February 19th. Therefore, if the primary trend is down and we're experiencing a counter trend rally, we would expect typically that that rally would end somewhere near these common fibs. It doesn't always happen that way. This just helps us with probabilities. We have six fibs here, three major fibs based on this A to B move and three major fibs based on this A to B move. If the downtrend is to resume, Typically, we would move back to one of these lines here, which represents those six major fibs. This is one of the 38.2% lines. We stayed below it a week ago. This is another 38.2 right here, and this is another 50. So coming into this week, if you're a bear, you would hope that either the 38.2 would hold here. If it doesn't, then it would be logical to potentially reverse at one of these levels here. So let's fast forward a week and see what happened. The market did advance in the following five trading sessions 
and we closed on Friday, February 26th, right between these two fibs. This is one of the 38.2s where my cursor is, and this is a 50% retracement based on A to B and A to B, telling us that thus far, an equal weighted S&P 500 index is in a primary trend and this looks like a normal counter trend within the context of an ongoing downtrend. If this is a normal counter trend rally, we would resume the primary trend and that trend right now is down until proven otherwise. If the market wants to go higher, the 61.8% and one of the 50% retracements come in here where this dark line is and it also comes in near this downward sloping line here, which is based on this low and this low. If this were a trend channel, we could also move back up into this level here, and we would have three potential forms of resistance in this area here. We did stall at a logical level and a logical counter trend rally level on Friday, February 26th. It doesn't mean this is potential resistance that we can't push higher. If we do push higher, then these levels up here may also be relevant. Now we're applying the identical concepts to a standard S&P 500 chart. This is a week ago. We're looking at this A to B fib and this A to B fib here. A week ago, we closed below or near the 38.2% retracements here and here. If in the following five trading sessions we broke out to the upside, we would hope, if you're a bear, that it would hold either at the 50% retracement here, this is one of the 50s, and this is the other 50 here. Let's fast forward and see what happened. Same exact chart as of the close on Friday, February 26th. Intraday, we came right up to the 50% FIB. So what this says is this is a primary trend from A to B. We retraced almost exactly 50% of that move, came up and hit the line intraday, and then dropped below. If we switch over to candlesticks, and you know candlesticks well, this has somewhat of an indecisive look to it. We've got a wick here, which shows us where the high came to the 50% FIB. It should also be noted that the market opened on Friday at 1954 and closed below the open at 1948. All of this simply helps us with probabilities. And it's telling us that this strong move off the low right now looks like a normal and 100% to be expected counter trend move within the context of an ongoing downtrend. If we clear these fibs, the probability of a trend change, those probabilities start to increase. If we clear the 61.8% fibs up here at roughly 2000 and 2010, it doesn't mean the downtrend is over but it's telling us that the probability of a trend change now is starting to increase quite a bit more significantly than down here. As long as we stay within these three major fibs and start to move back in this direction, it tells us that we would continue to give the primary trend, which is down, the benefit of the doubt. And since a primary downtrend makes a series of lower highs and lower lows if the primary trend is to continue. We also know that downtrends go on to make lower lows below the previous low. Again, we're not predicting anything here. We're talking about assessing probabilities of a counter trend rally relative to a new trend. Right now, this still falls into the category of a normal counter trend rally. That is absolutely positively subject to change next week or in the coming days or coming months. We're simply speaking to the facts that we have in hand right now as of the close on Friday, February 26th.
Now we're looking at one of the risk-on, risk-off ratios used by the CCM market model. We've picked a couple generic daily moving averages to illustrate concepts only. The concepts are relatively simple from an economic perspective. When people are confident about future economic and market outcomes, they typically would prefer to own growth-oriented stocks over defensive-oriented bonds. And you can see here, if you know your market history, the stock market actually bottoms in October of 2002, but you get another big scare into March of 2003, and the real probabilistic bottom and great entry point comes in the spring of 2003 after the dot-com bust. As expected, when people started to get more confident about the future, this ratio flipped from a primary downtrend to a primary uptrend. What we would be looking for would be the ratio to move above the moving averages, the slopes of both of the moving averages. We want them to turn up if we're looking for a bullish turn. And maybe most importantly, we'd like to get a bullish moving average crossover where blue, the faster moving average, moves above red. So this is what a bullish turn looks like. Same exact situation here mathematically at the end of the financial crisis. In the spring of 2009, this look here, price below both moving averages, blue is below red and the slopes of both are down, is quite a bit different than this look here. Price is above both moving averages, blue is above red and the slopes of both are up. Therefore, if we're looking for a serious trend change and turn, we want to know if the present day is starting to morph into something that looks like this or this, where the probability of good things happening was higher. Now we're looking at the exact same ratio, risk on versus risk off, relative to 3 p.m. roughly on Friday, February 26th. And as you know, not much changed in the last hour of trading on Friday. Right now, this really doesn't look like a bullish turn. Price is below both moving averages. Blue is below red and the slopes of both are down. That looks more like this side of the equation than this side here. Could this morph into something like this or this? Absolutely, positively, yes, and we're always open to that. The model allocates based on facts. These are the facts that we have in hand right now, and they're not telling us that a longer-term trend change is imminent from a probability perspective. It should also be noted, the current look of this chart is telling us that conservative assets are still trending relative to growth-oriented assets. This is risk-on versus risk-off, and the primary trend given what we know today, is clearly down. The last thing the ratio did was make a significant lower low relative to this low. This high here is a lower high relative to this high. A downtrend is a series of lower highs and lower lows. Before we move on here, I didn't mention it before, VBMFX is a proxy for AGG. AGG wasn't around at this period here, so we're just using a mutual fund that is highly correlated to AGG. Now we're looking at full bore bearish looks here. This is during the dot-com bust, the primary trend is down, dot-com bust, the primary trend is down. The next question would be, could we be moving into a long-term counter-trend rally? We know counter-trend rallies can last a long time this counter trend rally here in the S&P 500 lasted almost exactly two months. Notice, before the counter trend rally really gets going, because these levels here are the same, price moves back toward what is now a flattening blue moving average here, and blue and red are close together, and price and the moving averages are clustered together. From this low here, we rally fairly significantly for a fairly extended period of time. Similar situation here. This one's a little bit harder because it's a sharper move 
in this case, but notice the counter trend rally gets retraced relatively quickly. This is a little bit more orderly counter trend rally. Price comes back up near the blue moving average, kind of hangs around for a while, giving the moving average time to flatten out here, and then the slope of it turns up, and we at least go sideways in the ratio for a while. Here, we at least see price blow through confidently blue, and then it starts to flatten out a little bit. So the next logical question is, do we have a counter trend rally forming or that type of look in the present day within the context of our existing downtrend? And how does the present day look compared to a primary downtrend in these two bear markets? Same ratio with the same moving averages on the same time frame. Slope of this and this, they're relatively steep and down still. We are getting some improvement though. Price is back near blue, but notice when you get an extended counter trend rally, typically the three price and the two moving averages start to congregate a little bit. Price and the moving averages start to congregate a little bit. Then we get an extended rally. We really don't have that yet. We do obviously have some improvement with price near blue, but the slope is still down. And look at all the white space in between these moving averages here. So this chart, as well as some of the data in the market model, has shown some measurable improvement. It's still relatively minimal. Something else should be noted. Our rules, implementation rules and standards change when the primary trend is down. Why? When you're in a bull market and these charts start to turn, you're giving the primary trend, which is up and in favor of stocks, the benefit of the doubt. That's not the case anymore. Now the primary trend is down and the model gives conservative assets the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. Now we're going to make comparisons to 2016, 2011, 1994, and 1998. The concepts will be similar across all of the years, so we'll try to move relatively quickly. These are generic weekly moving averages. This is actually a bullish setup in 2011. Why? Because from point A, what happened next? Stocks rallied sharply into calendar year 2012. And this illustrates the importance of maximum flexibility. Ugly charts and ugly profiles can begin to show discernible and meaningful improvement at any time. Those concepts apply to 2016 as well. So really what we're asking here is how similar is the present day to this point here when a sharp rally followed? And in this case, the primary trend resumed and it was up. 2016 chart is as of Thursday, February 25th. It didn't change because these are weekly moving averages in any significant manner. There are some similarities here. This is a relatively ugly profile, and so is this. There are some differences, though. Look how long the blue moving average rolled over here. It really wasn't that long. Look how long it's been weak here. And we also have the same thing with red. Red's come down, it tried to rally, and it's almost made a lower low. This is a relatively short turn here. As far as price goes, here we have a low, a rally with a lower high, and now a lower low. We don't have any of that from the rally point here. We went down following a higher high made a low, and then immediately rallied back and made a higher high. Price looks quite a bit different here than it does here. However, this setup does have some similarities still to this setup here, telling us to keep an open mind about improvement starting next week. Now we're using some generic and round number daily moving averages. Same concepts. Point A was where the rally started in 2011, so this actually turned out to be a bullish setup. How similar does 2016 look? 
I think it's fair to say 2016, as of Thursday, February 25th, looks quite a bit worse than this period here. Notice blue peaks. This is a higher high, and we make a low here. This is a peak, a low on blue, a lower high, and a lower low. And look at the slope on blue and how far below it is the other moving averages. Mathematically, this is a weaker trend and weaker look than this period here. Could stocks rally out of this formation? Sure they could. The probabilities are just lower than they were in 2011. If we remove price, it's a little bit easier to see the trends. So these are the weekly moving averages without price. This is where the market rallied from in 2011. How do the same MAs look with price removed here? This is a weaker mathematical and trend profile than this period here. Notice when the stock market rallied, look how long green had been rolling over. Look how long it's been rolling over now. Look at that slope compared to that slope and the duration of it. Look at red here. Red is basically kissing green. Now we have a bearish moving average crossover that's been in place for a few months. Same exact concepts, and we're going to use the same generic weekly and daily moving averages to illustrate basic concepts. 1994, this is somewhat of an ugly looking indecisive profile. What happened after point A? Stocks rallied sharply out of this tentative profile here, reminding us to keep an open mind in 2016, Ugly charts and ugly looking profiles can begin to improve at any time, but notice the improvement. We can see it. It's discernible. What happens is, is price moves back above the moving averages and eventually all of the moving averages turn back up and blue is back on top. Let's compare this bullish setup here and maybe more importantly, what the early stages of a bullish move look like to calendar year 2016. In 1994, the fastest moving average blue was on top in the present day. It's pushing down near the bottom. You can also see how long some of these moving averages have been rolling over relative to this period here where the strong rally started. Maybe more importantly, these two charts cover a similar time frame, about 16 months if we go point to point over that period, from the rally point, price was higher than it was roughly 16 months ago in 1994. You can see that's not the case today, which also speaks to a weaker trend in the present day. Also, 1994, we make a high, a low, a lower high, but then we never make a lower low because we rally from this point here. In the present day, we have a high, a low, a lower high, and a lower low. Moving to our generic daily moving averages with volatile price removed so we can focus on the trends. Does the present day look similar, weaker, or stronger to point A, the bullish setup in 1994? In 1994, we make a higher high, then we make a low, we make a lower high, but we never make a lower low in the moving averages because we rally from this point here. It's not what we have in the present day. We have a high, a low, a lower high, and a lower low. You can get trends with moving averages. Look at the blue moving average here, how high it is over this same period, roughly 16 months here. Look where it is here. This is a weaker mathematical profile and thus a lower probability profile of good things happening relative to this rally point in 1994. Probabilities tell us that good things can happen out of this chart pattern. It's just the lower probability outcome relative to this scenario here. Same exact concepts, 1998. These are our weekly moving averages. This is a waning trend here. What happened next from point A? From this tentative profile right here, this is the same point A here. We had a sharp 
rally in the S&P 500 index. The same exact weekly moving averages as of Thursday, February 25th. Look how high blue is here on our chart. And look how much white space there is between blue, the faster moving average, and green, the slower moving average, which speaks to the strength of the current trend. Compare and contrast that to here. Blue is well below green. The slopes of all of them are down. The slope of green is up here. The slope of green has rolled over here. And price, these are the same time frames, roughly about 16 months, point to point. Notice the strength of the trend. The rally starts from here, point to point. Notice the strength of the trend. This profile in the present day is weaker than this profile in 1998. Comparisons economically between 1998 and 2016 may hold some water. When we look at our generic daily moving averages, the analogy between 2016 and 1998 starts to get very, very leaky. This profile here is unquestionably quite a bit weaker and quite a bit worse from a probability perspective than the point from where stocks rallied in 1998. These aren't just lines on a chart. They represent the market's interpretation of all of the good information, bullish information and bearish information. These slopes tell you that the interpretation is still favorable and bullish. These slopes tell you that the interpretation has now rolled over to unfavorable and bearish from a weight of the evidence perspective and from an aggregate opinion perspective, which is what the CCM market model tracks. Therefore, the moral of the story this week on our time frame is that we have seen some improvement, but remember, now that the primary trend is down, the hurdles get higher. We give the primary trend which is conservative assets, the benefit of the doubt mathematically until proven otherwise. Right now, this appears as it sits today to be a counter trend rally, a normal counter trend rally within the context of an ongoing downtrend. As always, we'll head into next week with a flexible, unbiased, and open mind because we know that ugly charts and ugly market profiles can begin to improve at any time. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time? The sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The submodels allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile. And the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options. If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, Short Takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional 
before making any investment decision.